Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, a former top lawyer to Congressman Barney Frank and talk show host on Pacifica Radio. This week, Republican Representative Aaron Schock shocked constituents by resigning. Once considered a rising star of the GOP, the fourth-term congressman faced increasing allegations of questionable spending. We talked about his lavish lifestyle right here on That Was the Week That Was. Jack, you called it. Are you happy with his decision to step down? Oh, yes. I think he had to do it, Morris. That case could go criminal. I think you have some bad stuff there. I think he avoided a criminal prosecution. He did the right thing. You have to give him credit. I think because he resigned early in the scandal, I think uh, life will deal him a, uh, a second hand. I think he'll get a new deal. Might be 10 years down the road, but I'll make a prediction. He'll get another shot. All right. I don't know. A shock gets a shot again, according to Jack. But the FBI is now digging into the way Congressman Schock spent tax taxpayer money. He was one of the youngest Republicans ever elected into office, but the age's old temptation of money may have gotten the better of him. Mark, do you think age had anything to do with it? I don't think it was age. I think Schock had a flair. He had a style for publicity. I actually think he may have a future shot, not as a congressman, but as a star of a reality show. Then he can flash his abs and show us his snowboard tricks and all the things he really enjoyed, rather than being in Congress, which he really wasn't very good at. He didn't draft any bills, and uh, he spent much more time decorating his, art, his office than actually doing anything politically. But he's got style. Well, we'll see what happens to him. Uh, Mark's right. I have, I have no rebut. I, I have no rebut to that, Morris. I think he's right on all counts, sadly. I do think age, though. The one point I would disagree Well, let's say it. immaturity. Age, but I think immaturity, yeah. again, the age is old thing of money. You know, you see you see all this money out well, there, and why not I, go I actually it? think it wasn't the money he wanted per se. I think he wanted all the attention and all the style, and then he, he improperly used money to get it. And uh, I'll we'll say this. Out. People of the group of people, I, of the group of young men I have watched get elected to Congress between, say, age 28 and 35, very few of them, very, very few of them ever make it. And the reason, whether it's age or maturity, uh, it's almost always a problem. It's a problem something in the 80 to 90 percent range, looking back in the 25 years I've looked at Congress. Interesting. All right. Well, while Shock is leaving his seat, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is keeping his. Netanyahu was locked in a tight re-election race, made some major promises, including no two-state solution with Palestine. The White House isn't happy. There are obvious policy implications for Prime Minister Netanyahu's comments. Uh, and it has, uh, in the mind of the president and other senior members of his team, uh, created a need uh, for the United States to reevaluate our approach. GOP Senator Marco Rubio called this reassessment a tragic mistake, but it's been a long-standing objective of both Democrats and Republicans to have a two-state solution. Jack, what do you think of the reevaluation? Well, he said, I, I don't like it, Morris. What he said is reevaluate our approach, take another look at our approach. What he means is he wants to reevaluate our whole relationship with the state of Israel and reevaluate re our alliance with Israel, which is horrifying. Israel is the only beachhead for the United States in the Mideast without Israel. I don't think we even, even the Saudis aren't reliable allies anymore. It's thank God, thank God Netanyahu won, but the problem is now it leaves Israel without relations with the U.S. government. This isn't Netanyahu's fault, it's Obama's fault. Obama has a, has a fixation, he's got a problem. I think it's rooted in his, his just fundamental anti-colonial views. He's got this, this worry and concern about Anglo-American imperialism. It's almost as though he roots against his own country. We've seen in Africa, we've seen in this hemisphere, and now we see it glaringly in the Mideast. Well, I remember when he came in after George Bush, he went on the what people call the apology tour, but really he was trying to tell the world, look, we're not the wild cowboys that Bush and Cheney were, and maybe you were seeing a, a, just a continual fixation of that. What do you think, Mark? Well, I'm not going to go into the psychological treatment of President Obama. I think that's a little silly. I, at the end of the day, Netanyahu has been all over the map. First, he said he supported two-state solution. Then, right before his election, he said he didn't want a Palestinian state. Now, a day a after a the solution? election, do you like a two-state solution? Jack, a day after the election, he came back and he said he supported it again. So he's a politician. Mark, he's a crafty do you politician. It? Do you support it? I support a two-state solution if it can be peaceful and demilitarized <laughs> and, and, not, and not controlled by ISIS. Mark, the White House and Netanyahu have had a strained relationship for some time, and House Speaker John Boehner hasn't helped. Now Boehner is planning a trip to Jerusalem. 
Mark, for decades, Israel has never been a partisan issue. Is the GOP in danger of making a one? I think that's exactly what Speaker Boehner wants to do. What he's taking is the fact that, let's face it, President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu do not like each other. That's no secret. He wants to really try to drive a wedge there. But what he won't do, and where I really disagree with Jack, is he won't drive a wedge in the fundamental support and alliance between the United States and Israel. Yes, Obama thank and Netanyahu, the Congress, they don't like each other. All I can say but is thank God the U.S. and Israel Congress, will always be allies. Thank God the Congress reached out out to Israel or the alliance may have withered, the alliance may no, have atrophied, the alliance, the alliance may have gone this away. This is personalities, it's not the alliance. All right, let's switch gears. The battle over confirming Loretta Lynch as the next attorney general has reached a fever pitch on Capitol Hill. Republicans have refused to vote because of an unrelated fight involving a human trafficking bill. Jack, this is starting to become a pattern for the grand old party. Hold out on one vote in exchange for something else. Well, that's politics. Both parties do that. Nothing wrong with that. That's been, that's a, a tied to just about every nomination you've seen, every controversial nomination you've seen. What really is disturbing here, Morris, is there are those on the left who are who are raising the specter of racism. They want to play the race card. They want to accuse the Republican Party of race. They say, well, this is the first African-American woman. Uh, that doesn't mean the Republican Party is guilty of, of racism. I think that unfounded allegations of racism in politics are every bit as bad as racism itself. Uh, there's just no place for it. I think a number of Democrats owe apologies this week, but I'm not hearing them. Well, Democrats claim there is racial bias, even comparing Loretta Lynch to Rosa Parks. And so, Loretta Lynch, the first African-American woman nominated to be Attorney General, is asked to sit in the back of the bus when it comes to the Senate calendar. Senator John McCain said there's no room for inflammatory rhetoric like that in Congress. Mark, does he have a point? Does your party go too far here? You know, I, this isn't a racist thing. What it is is Republicans being Republicans. They're trying to gum up the works of government every chance they can. In this case, they attach an abortion bill you agree with to an Jeremy? unrelated human trafficking bill. And the, the irony is the Republicans actually support Loretta Lynch more than the current Attorney General Eric Holder, but he gets to keep his job hey, because Mark, they're holding up her agree? nomination. Mark, let me ask a question. Do you agree with Durbin's Durbin's analogizing this to Rosa Parks? It's, it's not Rosa Parks, but it is but the, it is it? the longest an attorney general has not been nominated no in U.S. history, with one exception, Ed Meese, and that's because he had financial trouble. This is not a controversial nomination, Jack. They shouldn't be holding it up. There is a product, I think it's called Gum Out, that basically takes care of the gears and wheels. Maybe, Jack, you could get the Republicans <laughs> get some to buy oil some for of the that. Republicans, Jack. And, you know, get we'll some look gum in, out. I'll look into that, Morris. I think I, right. I may have a can in the basement. All right, speaking of going too far, some are saying President Obama did just that with his recent comments on voting. It would be transformative if everybody voted. That would counteract money more than anything. If, if everybody voted, then it would completely change the political map in this country. At least 26 other countries have mandatory voting. Should the U.S.? Jack, what's your take on Obama's Well, I think when, when the president talks about people voting, I think he's thinking of people that have been in the grave for many years. He wants those to be included. Oh, that's, that's part of the silly, problem Jack. I have. Oh, that's on. part of the problem the I have. The president does not Obama. want fraud. You this know is, that. On a serious note, this is kind of, Morris, this fits in with his big government philosophy. He wants to force health care. He wants to force the banks. He wants to force everybody to do something. And voting's terrible, and Jack. now he wants to force even democracy. Oh, Oh he my God, voting is terrible, voting. terrible thing. Well, now Obama went on to say people who tend not to vote are young, minorities, immigrants, or come from a lower income. Historically, those demographics are more liberal. Mark, do you think Obama's idea would only help Democrats? It certainly would. It would help the country. Look, no way. It would only help Democrats. You're saying it certainly would? I think it would because I think that I think he's right that young people. I'll tell you what, who don't vote. The people who aren't allowed to vote by the Republican Party, who's making it very, very hard for young people, for people, for African Americans. Americans, they're trying to use ID laws to keep people from voting. Let's just assume that There's, everyone votes. Let's let make it something. easy. Let's have week-long voting. As a guy who ran for office, and I'm running again, and only less than 10% of voters voted, I can there tell is, you, democracy would be Mark, better you might if be everybody the only Democrat. Voted. You might be the only Democrat in Virginia I might ever vote for, if only because a Republican can't win in that district. But I'll tell you this. There's terrible voter fraud in both parties. Oh, that's but not I mean, true. But I have, that's oh, not true. terrible voter fraud. But I have seen more on your side than I have seen on this side. Jack, I mean, there's been like 10 cases in a century of in-person voting fraud. Yes, Mark, some of the voter rolls are wrong, but that doesn't mean people go in, in and 2008, use them. Obama busts, the unions were busting people over three states in a single day. 
Yeah, three yeah, states in a single day. the unions day. bust people. I'm not sure what the issue is. Here's the issue, Jack. How about this? You, how about you and I agree you can go into a voting booth and they take your picture and you sign under penalty of perjury that you are who you say you are. Same day registration. If you lie, throw him in jail for five well, years. Well, yes, but and that's everybody not the could vote that way. Wants to force there people shouldn't to vote. be a burden of voting. Well, yes, voting is a see, right, not a privilege. That's it's all a right true. a lot of people die That's for. all true, Mark, but it's off the point. The president is saying he wants to force everybody to vote by federal law. That's a completely Actually, different Actually, what he issue. said is to be transformative if All right, everybody well, voted. Vote for it this program. Be. That was the week that was. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank, Thank you, Mars. Thank you, Mark.